Hi, and welcome to Drumming Solo, the channel where we let the drummer speak. In this episode, we're up in Liverpool at the UK Drum Show, and we catch up with Grayson the Crookman. Give us a like, give us a subscribe, and click on the bell icon so you can be notified when we release more videos. Enjoy the interview, and we'll see you next time. Grayson, let's do it. Thanks ever so much for doing this. Of course. Welcome to beautiful Liverpool, the English nice, weather. Nice, beautiful rainy day. Um, so, we basically, we just want to know about how you got started in drumming, musical upbringing, first things you listened to. Mm. Was it a musical household? Somewhat. I wouldn't say so much of a household as much as a musical mother. Okay. My dad, not too much into music at all. I mean, he has his favorites, you know, here and there. Yeah. But mainly my mom. Okay. And my middle brother. I have two older brothers. So he's a saxophone player. So it was really my mom and my brother, and then extended family. Okay. So what sort of stuff were they listening to? Was it, was it was the whole big brand thing because your brother played saxophone? And was he influenced by that? No, he was. Me and him took very different paths. Okay. And I was like, eh, didn't like anything that he was listening to. Um, my mom was into reggae. Okay. And so from a young age, she was in, she was listening to rock and reggae and everything other than mainstream music. Yeah. And then my brother, you know, in high school was playing full time. So. Okay. That was all jazz. Yep. Um, but I kind of just always wanted to do my own thing. Okay. So what was the first band or artist style that you got into? Dave Matthews Band. Dave Matthews Band. Not a bad... How old were you getting into Dave Matthews Band? Because I was, I was in my 20s when I got into it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Eight. Wow. Seven. Yeah. So the... Obviously, Carl, was, uh, was he be your first drumming influence? Carl Beaufort? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. By far, number one, always for me. And then did you get, or did you have a drum kit by then and were you trying to replicate the parts? At a certain point, I actually set up my drum set open-handed and everything yeah. for it. And uh, that was that was an interesting time because I thought, oh, if I set up the kit exactly like Carter, I'll be able to play the parts exactly like Carter. And yeah, that didn't really work out too well. So first kit that you were playing along to Pearl Forum. Okay. Which was, I'm talking 2007, 2006, 7? Yeah. So the golden. Standard five piece? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, was that one that you'd saved up for and thought, I want to buy a drum no, kit? No, my, my parents surprised me with that. Okay. When I was five or six. Yeah. And then my first kid I ever bought myself was a. Yamaha Oak Custom at like 13 or 14. And then you had that one. was the one where I saved all the money. I was going to say, were you, were you working? Yeah. Working? Yeah, I was shoveling snow. Wow. <laughs> New York. Yeah. So did you have a, were you schooled in drumming or was it self taught and then you got schooled? No, it was lessons first with two different teachers, one from four till really 14 and then okay. from 14 17 I was kind of on my own and then 17 through 18 I took some lessons 16 through 18 19 I took some lessons again with a different teacher and those two really helped me and then from there I kind of was like you know what I think I'm gonna do my own thing for now a little, little bit and just see what I can come up with on my own and see what I can develop any particular books you studied that you'd recommend to people now Stick control. Yep. Um, syncopation. Okay. And then maybe, I don't know. I would say those two mainly. Yeah. Those two were the biggest impact on me. Do you still revisit them occasionally? To warm up. Yeah, yeah stick control. Yep, sometimes. Is, yeah. Mm -hmm. One of those books that you just can never oh, of not course. just put back on the shelf mm -hmm. and, and, and leave it there. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you got, um, or your, your big break. For me, the first time I heard your name was when Stuart Copeland uh, recommended you as the next big thing. 
were you already online and obviously putting out your, your content? And then as soon as he mentioned it, did you notice a significant spike? No. Or was it just a I, gradual? I think people had that assumption that like if somebody, oh, if only one person would shout me out, yeah. it'll save me or it'll make me. It is so far from the truth. <laughs> okay. Um, he, it was amazing, but there was no, there was no spike or anything. I mean, no. it was simply a result of hard work at posting and consistency and posting every other day for years. And, and then when he did that, it was like, oh, nice. But there was, there was no, yeah. there really was no impact from that at okay. all. Okay. So what set you down the, down the online route? Had you seen someone else doing it? Or did no, you just think just... that format suited you? It was, at the time, it was just a way to do something with these things I was learning, other than playing them live. Yeah. And then during COVID, it was kind of a thing where everybody was locked in the house. And I was like, well, I can't go play gigs, <laughs> yeah. but I can do this. So then I said, let's just dive right on into that. <clears throat> Had you been playing much? live before that was it all oh, yeah. school bands because mm -hmm. you did the was it the marching band stuff no, a little bit no or? i never did marching band I, I was in jazz ensembles okay uh the all national one i was in some other out of school ones through lincoln center but that was it felt like a different life <laughs> okay you know um i was doing all that and then COVID hit and then that's when the online stuff started to grow and then i think people that discovered me through that know me as somebody completely different than the people who knew me before, before that I, yes so obviously now you've got a a massive following and you're posting regularly um obviously you get thousands of great comments but you will still get the odd idiot mm. who uh who likes to um troll essentially mm -hmm. how do you how do you deal with those those people is, is it is it is it thick skin is it i'm used to it it's i mean it must have been those. hard at the start yeah it's all those and then it's actually gotten to the point where i enjoy embarrassing them yeah sometimes so i'll on TikTok, i'll take um a comment and i'll actually respond to it with uh, with a video yeah. but no like i've on TikTok, i've never said anything in a, a caption ever nothing okay it's always hashtag drum but like nobody on tiktok knows me if they don't go out of that realm if that makes sense okay so sometimes i'll troll them and just post a video of some crazy show yeah and then all my fans will go attack the person on you know so that's like a little funny game but for yeah. real like i just i think if they take the time to say something like that Kind of shows what they're going through. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Could care exactly. Less. You know, um, I, it, it actually it amuses me when it's like, wow, I'm doing I'm doing that well that I'm getting people that don't like me. And let me yeah. keep doing it more. And sometimes I do it to just kind of like, all right, come on, <laughs> bring it. <laughs> you know. Um, and now you're obviously with suicidal tendencies. Mm -hmm. And how many months has it been so far? But is that experience? Five now, maybe yeah. five, six. And how how are you finding life on the road? I love it. You yeah. know, it's it's an interesting road because it's different in a lot of ways than any other band, and it has its you know challenges of travel and the schedule. And right now, it's a lot of flying, and it's just a lot of a lot of travel <laughs> okay that's i think the biggest the biggest thing of and the uh, a band like that where it's it's no bus we're flying almost every week um it's almost like the highest definition of like weekend warrioring it <laughs> okay because it's literally right now every weekend but then i'm coming home you know for four days at a time unpack my bag do my laundry and then go back to the airport and but it was pretty funny when uh I knew I made it when a few weeks ago I'm at JFK and the guy in the lounge is like, oh, good to see you again. I'm like, oh, he, like, I see the same guy every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and the show is very physical. Mm -hmm. um, how do you prepare for that? Because it's literally a, a sprint for what, 
an hour, 90 minutes. Yeah, pretty minutes. much. Um, it's non-stop. I'll go to the gym before. Yep. Um, especially with a band like that, I'll literally go to the hotel gym and spend an hour working out. Standard workout before I play. Yeah. And then show up right to the arena and play. Yeah. You supported Metallica mm -hmm. earlier in September. Mm -hmm. How was that for you? <laughs> Wild. We had four days notice. Yeah. Um, I got a cold the day I got the call. And then when I was flying home from our show before, um, I can't actually remember where we were. I, I believe it was, we we're on the West Coast somewhere. And uh, oh, yes, I went from California to New York back to Phoenix. That's what it was. So I go from California to New York. I land in New York feeling so sick. And then I had like three days before I left, spent all three days in bed. Okay. And then flew right to Phoenix and get to the stadium. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Did you uh, get to meet Lars? I saw, I saw oh, you. Oh, yeah. You, all, you, all the guys, you know. Sat on his kit everybody and had a little play. Was, everybody was super, super, super cool. So, kit talk. Mm. What are you using at the moment? I just ordered two of the exact same kit. <laughs> which is a uh, Pearl Masters Maple. Okay. Um, I got one in this cobalt blue, and then I got a piano black. Okay. Same sizes. Same size. <laughs> what, yeah. what are the sizes? Uh, 22 kick, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18. but mainly doing like 10, 12, 16. Yeah. Offset from the bass drum to the left. Okay. And then... 14 by six and a half reference brass snare. That's a nice snare. Yeah. It's a very nice snare. Mm -hmm. And symbol wise? Um, right now, my favorite ride is the Serpent Ride from Meinl. Okay. Um, crashes are kind of a mix. Classics, custom, dark, those black ones with the kind of circles of lathing that kind of go yes. around. Um, and then just the traditional medium crashes they make. I'm uh, not picky. And is it obviously you have your setup at home? Mm -hmm. Do you do you change like your ride symbol if you're doing a rock video or a jazz video? Yeah, I think the ride symbol is the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, but that serpent ride, that thing, I love it because I don't have to worry. I can kind of play whatever on it. Do you use that live? Yes. Yes. Okay. I don't know what I'm using today, but we'll go don't find think out it's that. Yeah, I don't find think out it's that exactly. Minutes. Yeah. Cool. And plans for the rest of this year, you're off to Australia with mm -hmm. tendencies. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? Yeah, I'm doing a full clinic tour there as well. Okay. Of, it's actually hilarious because I can't say where I where Suicide is going right after Australia, but they, they are going home. <laughs> I'm staying for another <laughs> week. And then I'm taking the flight of my life from Australia to another country that I I didn't know you could connect these two countries. Which is <laughs> it's South America. Okay. Um, I don't know if, if the concerts announced and all that, but at that you know that's the benefit I guess of me going crazy with all this travel yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So uh, a bunch of clinics and a bunch of shows and just decided to keep traveling. I do. Um, life away from music. Hmm. How do you relax? Exercise. Exercise every day? Yeah. Good old gym or run or yeah. hike. Hike is my, my real thing. Okay. My real favorite. Um, uh, went to national, my new thing is national parks, but okay. in the US I'll, wherever we are, I'll just find the nearest <laughs> national park and just go by myself. Yeah. It's just the most hilarious thing to some people because they're like, oh, you go by yourself. And I'm like, yeah, it's a big deal. But that's that's my thing. Any particular podcasts and stuff you listen to? <clears throat> Joey Diaz, comedian. Oh, okay. I haven't come across my, that oh, one yet. Oh my gosh, my favorite by far. And is it purely? Do you, is it stuff that you listen to that's away from music, or do you listen to music podcasts or um, drumming podcasts, or you know, do you no, so, or do you just try and really. step away from the, all of that? I try to, yeah, I try to get away as much as possible. <laughs> You know, it's like when you're so in it all the time, 
Yeah. That's the last thing you want to think about. Yeah. So, no, nothing to do with drumming or anything. I just, everything other than that. Okay. Whatever, exercise or fitness or nutrition, yeah. nothing else. Um, a few months ago, <coughs> you did the Drumeo playing a song that you'd never heard. Is that the most awkward situation you've been on camera? Because obviously playing wise, it looked immense fun, but <laughs> was the whole process just one of those? That was the most uh, testing. I'll say it very nicely, not happy moments yeah. afterwards. Um, it was not comfortable to do. No. That was not a comfortable position I was in. Um, I agreed to it, but do I look back on it and say, maybe I should have done that? Sometimes. <laughs> um, just because you're sitting there realizing, and it's really funny because actually a lot of people have come up to me and been like, oh my God, I met you through, you know, you know saw you through this video and that's great. Yeah. But then you're sitting there and you're thinking, all right, so I'm going to potentially embarrass myself in front of how many millions of people? Yeah, it's a lot. To my own, like willingness you know mm. which is kind of like a weird thing especially when it's <clears throat> our livelihoods yeah yeah <laughs> so it's like you know you never know who could see that and be like oh wow he really can't play and they don't understand the concept of i just heard the song yeah so if they don't know the concept and they see that Cause, yeah to explain <laughs> to people you're you're listening to a, a essentially a drumless a, non, a drumless, drumless drumless track, track for the first and you, time and you've with got no practice and everything was filmed yeah then I just I guess some people would think it's I think some people go to it with the attitude of like you gotta have fun and it's this that it's like well not everything can be fun some yeah. things work yeah you know some some stuff is has to you have to take serious at some point and if you're not gonna take your own like playing and all that serious mm. too like what are you what are so, you doing uh, so have you listened to Sleep Token since? Or have you no, <laughs> no. I mean, they sounded great. I yeah. just had, you know, Avenged, of course. Yeah. Because we did an Avenged sevenfold version. Yes. But um, I've always loved them. And Brooks okay. is a good good buddy of mine. But so that was funny when he, he reached out after that and was like, you killed it. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so did you wish you'd, you'd had Mr. Brightside or whatever? Uh. Like? <laughs> Would that yeah. have been a bit easier for you? Yeah. But that, that version of Brightside is unbelievable. <laughs> if you've uh, if you've not uh, checked that out, it's the Megadeth drummer. It's unbelievable. Do you have any secret talents that nobody out there knows about that you're willing to share, or are you just going to let things keep a secret? Uh, uh, artwork isn't really a secret because I post it a lot, but people don't realize. So you, you've, that. you've done your. Is it a bass drum? Bass drum heads. Yeah, you've done. No, I've done. I'm working on a bass drum, but I usually do like snare and tom hitch. Yeah. Um, or work on those. And then probably the other one would be cooking. Because I love cooking. Oh, okay. Or baking. That's why I'm here and I'm like eating all the bread and all the, yeah. the crumpets and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, oh this is so good. <laughs> Have you had a full English breakfast? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and, and it's very dangerously good. <laughs> Except I'm, I'm too scared to try the, um, what's that? The black. Black, black pudding. Black pudding. Because oh. there's a little yeah. disc in the hotel breakfast. I'm like, what is that? Yeah. Is it good? It go with a go with an open mind. Go on taste and then find out what's Do in it. Do you like it? I I love it. Do you like it? No? <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. You guys like black pudding? Uh, not no. no? Alright. Okay. There we go. So yeah. There we go. That's, that's, your, that's, your, that's, your, that's, your, that's your market <laughs> research done then, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> I think this gentleman would. Yeah. So, so if you were to cook one dish, then what would be your uh, oh man speciality? Oh man, that's that's too tough. Is that's it? too tough. I mean, I can make the meanest like classic American breakfast ever, okay? Like French toast and eggs and all that stuff. Um, but if we're talking for real, like New York pizza, from people who know. My uncle run, like, all runs the, a pizza, all the, all the pizza shop. Of oh, the, you do oh all that. my dad used to work in one. My uncle runs oh, okay. a pizza shop. Like, oh, there we go. We're talking like real New York. Um, <laughs> so all that stuff. Any, okay. Anything with cars. Yeah. Oh, thanks so much for Thank that, mate. You. Appreciate it. We'll look forward to your performance later. And uh, 
we'll uh, enjoy the rest of England. Absolutely. Cool. Cheers, buddy.